I'm Shan. This is the story time. <laughs> I have got a haul today, so um, a little pile of books to talk about. I think I've kind of bought them over the last couple of months. Um, yeah, and I think it's, I think they're quite a nice mix of stuff. The first few are ones that I bought especially for Spooky Smart Bitch uh, Readathon, so I've kind of already read them in the TBR. But just in case you didn't want to watch that, um, I'll just briefly uh, talk about them here. So I've got this manga, which is um, The Girl from the Other Side, story and art by Nagabi. Um, and this looks really cute. Heard lots of, since I kind of mentioned it in the um, TBR, I've heard lots of um, positive things about it. And apparently it is cute. So that's that one. I've got The Exorcist by William Peter Baratti. Not as cute. I don't think as the manga um, and way bigger than I thought it was going to be obviously the book that's now film I haven't seen the film so I think I'm going to read it and watch the film it is bigger than I thought it was yeah I thought it was just going to be maybe a short sort of almost like pulpy kind yeah. of thing was there a sequel to The Exorcist? oh I did see that there was going to be like a, maybe a new series coming oh, out oh yeah you mentioned that didn't you? Um, with some of the original cast maybe this was written in 1971 and this is actually a 40th anniversary edition um, and it's got um, uh, like an introduction by the author from 2011 as well which would kind of be interesting to read. There are sequel films to The Exorcist. Okay but not books. The Exorcist 2 The Heretic is from 1977 and then Exorcist 3 is from 1990. Okay. And this has been a few in the series since but probably not books though in the film. Okay let's it's going to be a fun summer in that yeah, place. Oh, definitely. We can get into the exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this one, uh, The Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas. And I think a lot of people are going to be reading this one. Well, it's the book group book for uh, Spooky Smart Bitch Readathon, but I've also seen that it's like on book clubs and things from, in different places. So everyone's reading it this month. Even Bert's going to be reading it as well. Bert's got his eye on this yeah, one, I do. haven't you, Bertie? Yeah, very much. Yeah. So it's about 16-year-old Jake Livingston um, who lives in a working-class diverse neighbourhood and then he goes to like a fancy school where he's one of the only black students, constantly at the mercy of racist teachers and peers who don't understand him. Um, and then he also sees ghosts alongside all of that. Yeah, it does look good. Um I've got this one. I love the cover of this one. This is um, Edendale by Jacqueline Stollis. It's got spine on the spine because it's like from Creature Publishing. Um, this is about. This is set in Los Angeles, um, and I feel, although I don't know if it says here, that it's almost like a post-apocalyptic kind of horror. Um, but I really like sort of LA setting. So it's got about wildfires, rage, and coyotes stalk the neighborhood streets, and the air grows heavy with something else. As the fires burn ever closer, will the four friends wake up to their false paradise? I think it sounds really interesting. And I think it will be, even if it's not like, you know, a book I love, I think it will be an interesting book at the same time. So that's the Spooky Smart Bitch readathon books. Um, we, me and Bert went to town the other day and we've got this new shop in Cardiff called The Queer Emporium. I'm not really sure of its origins but it's an emporium um and it's got lots of different products from di other places that, 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 that are queer so it's got like um we've got this really great um bakery in cardiff which is uh queer owned so they've made cakes specially for it and there's like i bought bath salts there that were made by like a queer company as well so it's kind of stuff like that lots of different um elements kind of brought in together and one of them is like it's got a um it's got some books there, and that's under Panned or Gear, which is a really good name, <laughs> um, which doesn't make any sense if you're <laughs> if you're not in Wales. So um, Gear would be like gay, like a Welsh version of gay, and then Panned means um, like a cuppa. So Panned or Gay would Gear is it? So Panned or Deer? <laughs> this is really convoluted. <laughs> Panned or Deer is a phrase that would be like a cup of tea. Um, but they've changed the D to a G, so then it's like a cup of gay. It's very clever. <laughs> they also sell bisexual tea, 
in the shop as well, which is like a an iced tea. Anyway, I bought a book. I wanted to buy a book from them. They had actually a good collection, obviously just all queer books. Um, and the one that we got was this paperback, which is Dry Land by Sarah, Sarah Jaff. This is Blood by Andrea Lawler, who wrote Paul Takes Form of a Mortal Girl. And also Beth Ditto, who said, Be Still, My Gay Grunge Heart. So Bert wants to read this one as well. And this is also played by Maggie Nelson on the back, who says it's remarkable, part diary, part dream. It is a tender, meditative and quietly kaleidoscopic novel about the 90s queer, about the 90s, queer adolescence and swimming. Weirdly, I've read a lot of books about swimming recently. <laughs> um, and here's another one. And it's set in and like... sort of queer adolescence in the 90s. Yeah, all of those. So I've read like the Casey Legler one, Godspeed, and I've just read Lydia Yuknovich and they were all, yeah, queer swimming 90s books. Yeah. What are the odds? <laughs> um... Yes, yeah, so it was 1992 in Portland, Oregon. And 15-year-old Julie Winter moves through her days as if underwater, watching skaters through the constant rain, detached from her best friend's crushes, listening to the same REMB side on repeat. The rest of the world is caught up in the AIDS crisis, the war in Yugoslavia and grunge. But to Juliet, it's all background. It's actually a reissue, this one. So I think it originally came out in um, 2015, and then this edition is published by Cypher Press in 2021. What are you going to say, Bertie? Well, I, 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 I was under the impression that REM didn't really do B-sides. They always just put live tracks on their B-sides. So maybe it's uh, something I don't know about, just as a bit of a geek info. I'd be interested to see what Sarah Jaff uh, mm. is uh, we'll look alluding forward, to. We'll look forward to Bert's critique on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, for the um, Bert's My Circle Book Club, probably know we're reading um the gilda stories that one the vote was um the the theme for this for the two months was um obviously a book set in the 90s but it was like vampires um i and... take it back they did um they actually as i was aware they they had a, an album called dead letter office which is a b-sides collection so in the 80s they uh i take it back it's taking it back. Yeah. Just going to go through the track listing on that. It's a bit embarrassing, isn't it, for Bert there? <laughs> because I remember this. I had it from the library. Mm. Um, I'm just, I'm going... You don't have to defend yourself, Bert. You were wrong. Bert was wrong. I was wrong. I take I, I yeah. that on the chin. Yeah. But um, I'm going to say the, the B-side might be Gardening at Night, which was a classic. Right, okay. Um... Country feedback? That's not a B-side. Okay, I'm d I mean, I'm yeah. not... Although, having said that, now that you bring up Country Feedback, I prefer the version of Country Feedback that is on the B-side, which is recorded live, uh, I think, on Jules Holland. Okay. So that is a B-side, but it's also an album track. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Carry on. Back to 90s vampires. Um, we were voting for... We had three vampire 90s books to choose from. Gilda Stories won, but one of the other ones was um, Lost Souls by Poppy Z. Bright. Um, like, I've known about Poppy Z. Bright for years, I've never read any, and um, I think a, a few of them are out of print. This is out of print. I managed to get a second hand copy, which is like perfect, and it was really cheap. It was like three pounds, including postage. Be excited. Um, yeah, it's set in New Orleans, sex, blood and rock and roll from the master of gothic horror. So Poppy Zebright um, has transitioned as now Billy Martin. Um, but from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, I don't think, I think that they keep, that they talk about Poppy Zebright as their pen name now. Um, although I don't think they've, um, you know, written a great deal since the books that they came that came out in the 90s although i i do think there was there was something about him writing about um a stephen king book about religion in stephen king but anyway um yeah this is the one i like the sound of more there's another one that sounded like maybe a bit much for me but uh yeah yeah retired in 2010 yeah but, uh, he said that he's announced that he's returning to writing of a non-fiction project yeah 
work water if God's will if God wills it. Religion and spirituality in the work of Stephen King. But that was a long time ago, I think. Twenty eighteen, yeah. Uh, okay, I guess it takes a while to write a book. Mm. Um and then another second hand book that I've got is Harvest Home by Thomas Tryon. Um we read The Others by Thomas Tryon. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Which really enjoyed. Um, and I've been wanting to read this one. This is not like a great copy, like the spine is um, kind of pretty bashed up. But I do really love the cover. I just quite want, there's a hardback of Rudy's cover as well, but I think that was really expensive and this one was quite cheap. Um, there is a film as well we can watch. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So I'm like quite fascinated by Thomas Tryon. Um, he's gay, oh, was a gay writer, wasn't he? I don't know. But he was also an actor and then kind of, went into writing horror instead. Is he still around, Bertie? Yes, of course. Bertie's doing some research for us. Uh, no, died 1991. Died 91. Yeah, actor and novelist. Yeah, which I kind of just find fascinating. Yeah, he, play, he played some sort of quite big roles back he, in the 60s. I think he was quite, wasn't he quite like, you know, heartthrob? Heartthrob, so they looked sort of like western-y kind of things as well, so kind of, yeah hero characters and retired from the profession in 1969 and began writing horror and mystery novels which he was successful anyway he's fast i just think like what a fascinating background that kind of oh but it's got another fact from is 70... it about rem no <laughs> from 73 to 77 he was in a relationship with porn actor casey donovan that's the kind of information i want what's Kate? Bob's going to put a picture up of that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Can I see a picture of um, Thomas Tryon as well? It's going to be a lot of editing for Bert here. I don't edit. <laughs> we had a discussion and we decided it was best. I didn't. Oh, come on. He was like Stunning, super huh? kind of film star looks, isn't Rugged, it? Rugged, handsome, yeah. big arms. Yeah. There'll be pictures. Anyway, the others I really liked, which we watched the film of that too. Um, so I think this is going to be good. Let me know if you've read it. Um, I've got P. Jelly Clark's Ring Shout. Um, I love this cover. I got this from Shelf Life, our fabulous bookshop in Cardiff. Um, this one sounds so interesting. I know that Heather read it and really liked it. And it's, it's kind of like a... Is it like sort of alternative world horror type thing? But it's 1915, it says, and it's like about the Ku Klux Klan. And, and I, I guess it's a horror story kind of based around that. Oh, but it's got a fact. Uh, this is someone that's saying that Thomas Tryon was a guest of a friend of theirs in uh, a secret uh, private gay club in New York City. Um, he was a pretty... Uh, uh, it's saying that this guy was a pretty good pool shooter in the 70s when Tom and a few others stood around the pool table watching me shoot for $50 a game. When I bent down to take aim and make a shot, Tom was right behind me and I, I unintentionally hit him in the crotch with the back end of the handle of my cue stick. He said, hey, watch it. And I told him, move your ass next time. He laughed and so did I. And I never saw him again. <laughs> it's like a really rubber story. I, know, yeah. I, did, I love it. I did hear him say that he had just returned from Jamaica where he was a house guest in Noel Coward's Firefly home. It just gets better, yeah. like, doesn't it? <laughs> so we're just going to go on deep dive Googling and try it. I knew he was amazing. Oh, he is. He is, he is. Back to P. Jelly Clark, who I'm sure is also amazing. Um, yeah, I think it's like, so obviously, like, Two Clark's Clan is, a very, is horror <laughs> in itself, but I think it's like a, um, almost like alternative twisty world on that, as far as I can tell. Doesn't say much about it here. It's just a, uh, a short book. Um, Victor Laval says he couldn't write a bad book if he tried. Oh, it's a, a cursed film, The Ku Klux Klan and Demons Bent on Destruction. I was saying, Klu I always sound like I'm saying Ku Klux Klan. Ku Klux Klan. Ku Klux Klan. Yeah. And Demons Bent on Destruction are no match for Maurice Boudreau and her mystical sword. I mean, that. <laughs> That sounds good. It's going to be such a great time. Do you have more facts there? I was just going to say, like, aside from any facts, Jane Newins just like my picture. So, right. Yeah. Jane's new, Jane Newins was... This doesn't uh, have to go on the... Uh, well, 
Jane Newins was like Bert's school crush. She just wanted my picture. She's liked his picture. Yeah. Yeah. We're leaving this bit in. <laughs> I might learn to edit just to leave this bit in. <laughs> the other book I've got is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb, which is the first in the Farsia trilogy. Um, I'm not a massive fantasy <laughs> reader. I don't. I I like fantasy and kind of sci-fi when I'm, you know, I've said it before, like guided there. So I like stuff in my world or the or our world that is then, oh, there's weird stuff happening underneath or to the side. I really like those kind of things. So I know this is like straight fantasy. Um, but I know that everyone loves them. So I know that Mercedes loves them. I know that Leo from The Little Book Life loves them. Um, when I worked in, I used to work in Waterstones and... Um, staff that like Louise and Wendy who I work with in Waterstones they both love them as well and read the whole series and so it's just one that I've kind of been mean, meaning to give another go to it was really cheap so I bought it and I'm hoping to read it this year as well or at least give it a go um when um uh Jessica who's on Instagram she came to Cardiff and she brought me this book which is Bones and All, Camille D'Angelis, which is a young adult book. I think it's kind of, um, does have a little bit of cannibalism in it. Um, and I, I don't, <laughs> I don't love cannibalism. <laughs> but as I was explaining to Bert the other day, it's more like, I don't mind it so much, like a really weird discussion. In this, I don't mind cannibalism so much in a kind of, fantasy horror world what I can't cope with is like real cannibalism <laughs> so when I started reading that book um the book that is kind of based on the Donner party I started that and I just thought oh I can't do that one because it was all just too real so yeah I think Jessica's read this and said it's really good um about Marin who's a 16 year old who has dark urges there's a hun hunger inside her she can't control and no one is safe. Actually, I think maybe um, Jessica said it was more succubusy. We'll, we'll report back. Um, and we went book shopping and I bought two books. Like there was like buy one get one half price in um, Waterstone. So I bought these two, which are both really beautiful. Yeah, I love books. So this one is Felix Ever After. Last time I said that name was Kaken Calendar, which is Kaken is the Welsh word for cake. Um, I think it's probably Kaysen or something, isn't it? I should have checked, but yeah. So this is a, a trans young adult book and it's got this gorgeous um, sprayed edge there, really beautiful. I've heard lots of good things, I think that's going to be good. And then this one, that cover is just so gorgeous. Um, this is Wranglestone by Darren Charlton and it's part zombie epic, part gay love story. Um, I saw a picture of him, he'd gone to um, Gaze the Word and done like a signing there, he looked adorable. Um, so I think, is, it, is he Brit? He's got a map. Uh, lived in Hastings, worked in social care for the last 15 years. His lifetime obsession with National Parks of America, genre film, music and 80s kids mu movies have all worked their way into his writing. So I wonder if it's just like set in, in the US, but here's a picture of him. <laughs> Cute. So yeah, this is, I just think it is really beautiful. Um, yeah, zombies. Not a fan particularly of zombies, but it's, I can do it. Um, I've also got Burnt Offerings by Robert Marasco. So this, and this has got an introduction by Stephen Graham Jones. This is like a, a horror one as well. Republished on Valancourt Books. Um, initially um, written in 1973. And then it also had a film adaptation in 1976. Who was in the film? It was... Um, Oliver Reed. Oliver Reed. Just hearing that name makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, and it's like a couple who've, who've bought who've gone to live in a, a mansion in upstate New York, um, like really cheaply. Um, and there's only one catch behind a strange and intricately carved door in a distant, distant wing of the house lives elderly Mrs. Allardyce and the Rolfs will be responsible for, for preparing, the Rolfs will be responsible for preparing her meals. 
but she doesn't kind of emerge from her room and it becomes clear that something weird and terrifying is happening in the house. It sounds so good. It's gonna be great, isn't it? Yeah. Look at this gorgeous one. So this is Cultish by Amanda Montel, The Language of Fanaticism. Um, oh, Molly Ringwald has blurbed this. <laughs> She says it's a rigorous and fascinating examination of the power of language to spellbind us all. Um, I'm really interested in this one. I have a feeling it's like less about actual cults, more like like historically and more kind of contemporary stuff as well about how people are drawn in into stuff using kind of language. And yeah, I think even now, you know, all the stuff like around like QAnon and all of that kind of stuff. Um, Oh, it does say, yeah, about QAnon in the, in the blurb as well. Yeah. I'm really interested. I'm interested in kind of like related to kind of yoga and spirituality as well. So I wonder if that is covered in that. And it feels really nice. And then I've also got On Her Knees by um, Brenda Marie Davis, who's a YouTuber who talks about... Um, like religion and purity culture. This is a memoir of a prayerful Jezebel. I love the cover of this one. Um, and yeah, I think it's talking about her experiences in kind of, you know, kind of conservative religion and um, yeah, all of that purity culture and how that affects you. It's blurred by Linda K. Klein, who I read her book, Pure Inside the Evangelical Movement. Um, interestingly as well, it's, um, and she did a, she talks about this on her um, website, on her channel. It's got a forward by Joshua Harris, who's the guy that wrote Kiss, I Kiss Dating Goodbye, which was a lot of um, what uh, these churches were kind of basing their purity culture on. But he wrote it like, he since denounced it and wrote it when he was really young and kind of, yeah. So I'm really interested in it and I really like her. And then I've also got Dear Centurion, a black spirit memoir by a Quaker Maisie. Um, I've actually struggled with a Quaker Maisie, so I did DNF um, Freshwater. I tried it a couple of times, and then I've recently DNF Pet as well. So um, I don't know if they're the writer for me, but so many people love them that I want to. I feel like maybe the memoir is going to work maybe a bit better for me so I love the cover the um, US cover has just got like a close-up of this painting and I think the painting is beautiful and it's um, by Ruby and Manzi who I've I think I started following on Instagram as well and then the last one is Grady Hendrix the final girl support group I think we're all excited about this one <laughs> blurbed by Charlene Harris Stephen Graham Jones Rachel Harrison, Kim Newman, um, yeah, about a group of, look, it's got really nice pages there, but a group of women who are all final girls and they have like a support group and um, then one of them doesn't turn up to support group and it turns out that people are trying to kill the final girls. <laughs> um, heard mixed things about it so far but I think partly it's because everyone's got so excited about it <laughs> we just built up into a frenzy of you know a Grady Hendrix frenzy but I really like how he writes so I think even if it's not like a, I've really enjoyed everything he's written so even if it's not my favourite I know it's going to be a fun time that is all the books um I'd love to know if you've read any if you're interested in any um, if you want to talk to bit about like the finer details about REM and their B-sides, feel free to do so in the comments. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really excited about these books. Um, I hope you are too. Let me know. Bye.